Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Wednesday, May 12th, 10 p.m. Mountain Time, 2021. The models are in. Heavy rain for the central craton. Take a look at Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas, the nexus of the Shemexis. 12 to 14 inches, maybe 16 predicted in the next two weeks. But the big story, Colorado Springs weather, May snow record set. More expected. Keep calm. It's boom time. Not a big record, but a record indeed. Let's take a look. A winter weather advisory in effect in Colorado Springs until noon Tuesday is over. But Monday broke the May 10th record amount of snow with 1.1 inches of powder measured in Colorado Springs. The record snowfall for the date was just a half inch set back in 2006, which doubled that record like a schmeckard. Not even a word. Colorado snow totals May 11th. Front range in the mountains hit with spring snow. Ho, ho, ho. Not a lot of snow, but certainly 3.3 inches in Woodland Park, 8.8 in Estes Park, and 4.5 in Ned. Hello. It is mid-May. The sun is high. Well, so am I. <laughs> and there's a white screen. Bear Lake in Rocky Mountain National Park still has 58 inches of the global warming goodness on the ground. Third deepest snowpack ever recorded back to 1880. Isn't that shady? As of May 12th, Bear Lake snowpack is at 58 inches at 9,500 feet, which is 117% of average, making it the number three deepest snowpack on record for May 12th. While the exact opposite a few hundred miles away is happening, this Colorado Reservoir water level is 50 feet below average. It's parched, folks. And we're talking about Durango, Colorado, which is going to receive some rain in the near future, but not enough, in fact. And there is, take a look at here. This is the Nextel NRCS snow water equivalent at Lizard Head Pass. Just, this is what's feeding the Animus River in Durango. It has already run out as of the first week of May. There is no more water in the mountains in this region. One of the earliest runouts ever. The Animus River itself has broken records all uh, spring for the lowest flow ever. And here you can see that little region, the San Miguel and Dolores Animas San Juan at 39%. Rio Grande at 44 And that's our snowpack. So we're going to have a quick seasonal runoff here. But we do have a four-day event coming, which is going to replace a lot of moisture in this region, thankfully. And we'll get to that in just a second. Stick with us. New Tornado Alley. Tornadoes in the south are becoming more frequent and deadly. Find out what the science says about tornadoes and why they are becoming more frequent. Let's hear what they have to say, and then I'll tell you the real reason. If you it's think different. of Tornado Alley, the Great Plains or the Midwest region usually comes to mind, but it's been shown that over the years, the amount of tornadoes have been increasing in the south. And this week's to mind, but it's been shown that over the years. Actually, it hasn't been shown that. It has been reported that that's what's happening. But in some areas, there is an uptick. And the reason is, is because of the breakdown of the jet stream which used to be in all of our lives for the last several decades, at least four decades of really tight zonal flow, which is in the red here. And you remember as a kid, I do, that th this tight zonal flow would deliver the same Alberta clipper again and again to the East Coast. Well, that system has broken down as our magnetosphere has waned in the last few, two decades, especially in the last decade, and the flow has now become meridional, where you have huge pockets of warm air moving all the way up towards the Arctic and Arctic air moving all the way down towards the tropics. This type of hot and cold barrier is what causes tornadoes as it moves across North America. Nothing else. It is the difference between warm and cold masses. The more severe it is, the more tornadoes you have, and that's it. And this is, in fact, even happening in New York. New York State sees an uptick, but experts are still skeptical because they do not follow the actual science. They follow the dogma back over on this channel. Let's see what she has to say. Years, the amount of tornadoes have been increasing in the South. And this week's science... Oh, what? why won't you parse up for me? So when they don't want you to hear some information, it just showed that this video is completely parsed up. It went right back to the beginning. 
So regardless of what she says, the link will be below. I told you the reason. Lightning sends concrete flying through a windshield. And more increased hail and lightning are going to cause more eventualities like this. Lightning struck a highway in the Florida Panhandle, sending a chunk of concrete through the windshield of a pickup truck. Wow. Heavy rain and isolated severe thunderstorms in the south. Excessive rainfall will continue to bring localized flash, urban, and small stream flooding, along with new and renewed river rises over the north Gulf Coast into this afternoon. Isolated strong and severe thunderstorms are possible today across parts of southeast Alabama, southern Georgia, and portions of the north and northeast Florida. Frost and freeze warnings across the northeast as far down as, yes, take a look, Missouri, all the way south, some frost warnings. Frost and freeze warnings through East Tennessee, heads up Dubai, all of West Virginia. Hard freeze warnings in the mountains. Hard freeze up in northern Mish. Holy macaroni. And in western PA and southern New York State, all the way out to the Great Lakes. Also isolated areas in Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine. It's insane. Cover your crops or they will die. Let's take a look at the snowfall totals. Not much happening. Here's your Sunday, May 16th, Monday through your Tuesday. You're going to be seeing some Tuesday, Wednesday, snow moving into the northwest here, especially in the Cascades. All high elevation snow we're seeing. A clipper moving through Alberta in Ontario there, hitting Maine. And maybe a little bit more snow here in the southern mountains, but only at high elevations, which is much needed. If we take a look at the precipitation map, this is total accumulated precipitation. We can see that the big winter, winter chicken dinner over the next 10 days. Let's take it out to the 22nd. Over the next 10 days here is southern Texas. The nexus of the Chemexus could be 16 to 24 inches of rain in that region. And then we're looking at 8 to 14 in the maroon to yellow here. So heads up East Kansas, Eastern Okie or Central Okie, and East Texas, and East Kansas. Did I say that? But you can see a huge swath of moisture, 3 to 4 inches in the purple region here. So... Excellent for the mid Craton growing wheat regions. A little bit too much here in the yellow zone. We'll keep a close eye on it for you, but we're just reporting on it. Seismic update. No quakes of note. Well, I do lie. New Madrid is getting jiggy with a 3.0 in Marston, Missouri. We had a big popper at the mid-ocean ridge. Indicative of the earth growing ever larger. 6.7 in Mauritus. Now, we've had a huge influx of cosmic radiation because of solar flaring, which is now happening on our planet, which we predicted, and we're reporting on it. We'll get to that in a minute. But let's talk about the volcanoes. The eruption in the Recanis Peninsula continues to uptick, and the amount of lava discharge has made a rapid rise. That is what we're reporting on here. The activity of the current eruption site continues at elevated levels during the past two weeks. We're talking about the new Fisher 5 being in the spotlight, characterized by lava fountaining episodes four to 500 meters tall, a roughly regular, regular intervals of seven to 10 minutes. According to the late, latest measurements by the University of Iceland's Institute of Earth Sciences, which we love, from May 10th, the lava flow discharge rate increased significantly. Hello. There we are. <laughs> Boom. We were just off the camera like schmammer. How the heck are you? Everybody's looking beautiful tonight. Wow spectacular now the lava flow discharge rate increased significantly from 8 to 13 that is massive that's over a 50 percent increase in meters per second the effusive lava is now twice as it has been during most of the active period which has been over a month so huge uptick is happening in Iceland. More lava creating new land. Worldwide Volcano News Update. We have Pacaya, Fuego, Semaru, Tucono, Reventador, Kilauea, Sinabung, Salancaya. <laughs> and nothing spectacular. 11,000 foot of Pacaya, Sabancaya. We have some continuous ash. Tucono to 7,000 feet. Kilauea. The lake is divided into the upper and lower ponds. Uh, eruption ongoing. The transformation of Kilau Kilauea's lava lake continues after the third consecutive week of crusting. That sounds nasty. Semaru to 14,000, Fuego likely to 15,000, and Cinnabon booming to 8,000. What's in your wallet? Coronal mass ejection creates strong geomagnetic storm on There was Earth plenty today. of late season oh! snows. Not anymore. <laughs> Aurora sighted in the northern U.S. as a powerful geomagnetic storm continues. 
There's an outside chance that Northern Lights could appear once again tonight. As I'm bloviating, a surprise storm rocking Earth's magnetic field. Surprise storm. I predicted it four days ago, you idiots. Rocking Earth's magnetic field brought a rare display of the Northern Lights to parts of northern U.S. early Wednesday morning, sending sky watchers staring upwards as pastel hues danced in the heavens. There's a chance that observers could be treated once again this evening for the display possibly continuing courtesy of energetic particles striking the planet's upper atmosphere due to a coronal mass ejection which we predicted to hit Earth today. Hey, hey, which it did. The Northern Lights were sighted in Alaska as well as Minnesota as well as across Canada into parts of Europe and the UK. Their southern counterparts also made an appearance in New Zealand. How the heck are you, how do you like them apples? And we'll get to the telemetry in just a second to show you what's going on. Boom, there it is. Estimated planetary K index, three hour data. Unfortunately coming from NOAA, but that's the best we can do. You can see here that uh, when I woke up this morning, we were in moderate geomagnetic instability at KP4, and then boom, it shot up to seven. This is because the magnetometer had a massive uh, flux of 100 nanotesla instantaneously as that wave smashed into us, lasted for six hours, and dropped off precipitously. And I'll go show you that here on the telemetry. Let's just shrink that down a little bit so you can see it all in its glory. And let's just go over this so you know what's going on here. This is Discover Solar Wind. That's the same as ACE and others. The bottom graph is the temperature of the plasma coming in. You can see it's just dropped off the chart. And when we began the event, the temperature came up quite high. Dropped down here where you see a dip down in all the other telemetry. And then rose back up as a second wave hit. And now it's precipitously down. So based on that pattern, it may stay down and then come back up again for a third rise because these events last 24 to 36 hours, and we're just in that range still. Probably it's over. You can also see here the plasma speed in purple have an instantaneous rise of over 150 kilometers per second. The same time, the density rose exponentially, and the phi angle started rapidly shifting Earth to Sun, back Sun to Earth. The BZ also became quite jiggy, and when we see that huge amount of flux, we look for earthquakes or CMEs impacting. It's all calmed down on the BZ. It's all calmed down on the phi angle. The density has been lowered, and the speed is now dropping off, and that's all reflected in the planetary K index dropping towards quiet. Now, all those massive shootings we had over the weekend is because of KP0, and God knows what happened today at KP7. We'll be reading about it in the morning. So any questions, leave them below. I hope, hopefully I can answer them for you. But the CME's are, event is over. Okay, and let's, we just erased the Aurora forecast, which we'll come back to. Let me see if I can bring that back up. No, it's gone. So the Aurora forecast is gone. Unless we, let's just type in, let's just open a new tab. And let's get you that Aurora forecast. Bear with me for just a second. And the Aurora forecast is parsed and up. And let's take a look. Boom. Oh, that looks fantastical. Here you can see the Northern Hemisphere. The Aurora forecast for right now is showing that, yeah, Aurora may be tipping into Minnesota, North Dakota, maybe even Michigan. Get out there. Look up. Tell me what you see. That's as far as we go. Southern Hemisphere, you guys are glowing the most and it's all in Antarctica until, well, 12 hours from now when it gets dark there. So you guys are in the daytime. But let's talk about more of what's happening on the Earth as the magnetosphere wanes. The flow changes from zonal to meridional. We see hail increasing, breaking windshields by shooting pieces of concrete off of the highway. And more and more things to come, including electric jellyfish spotted flashing above the storm in China. Just a day ago, lightning bolts can be extremely dangerous, yet hauntingly beautiful. And we predicted that these babies would be on the increase. More lightning and more sprites. A jellyfish sprite over Guiyang, China, was photographed May 9th, 2011. And there is the picture, which is spectacular. And we're going to break it down for you. Now... Do you know what a Sprite is? A Sprite is a large discharge of electricity high in the atmosphere, miles above a severe thunderstorm that can extend almost to the edge of space, up into the ionosphere, 
and space is considered to be about 100 kilometers above us or 62 miles, however you look at it. But these sprites have been increasing over the last decade or so, especially during solar minimum. A lot of sprites showing up into the 2010 region, now 2020 times. Now we're at 2021. But if you take a close eye at these sprites, you see these balls in the center here. This is the central plasma column. There's an upward component and a downward component. You see this flaring in both directions. Whew. Very reminiscent of ancient cultural artifacts that we know about. One, two, three, four, five, six are ancient depictions of the cosmic thunderbolt of the gods. Hmm. I wonder if we have something here. Still mainstream doesn't believe a word I say. Here's A, B, C, D, E, and F. Plasma discharges made in a laboratory. Very similar to ones that actually happen on Earth. And we're back to those artifacts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Either written, found, or actual. These artifacts uh, are indicative of uh, objects from 1,000, 2,000, and 3,000 years ago in the time of Rome and Athens and other major societies, going all the way back to the Akkadians. And still, no one has any idea what these objects are depicting. No one. Except the Thunderbolts Project and many people like Diamond at the Oppenheimer Ranch Project that have been out in the field, have seen these petroglyphs, and are well aware of what they mean and what the people were depicting them were, were, were seeing. They were seeing plasma discharges in the sky and they were so significant because they had never happened before and they were so fantastic that they recorded them on the rock. Everyone worldwide recorded the same exact images on the rock because they saw the same exact thing in the heavens at the same time. Can you imagine that? Well, I can. I've seen it. <laughs> and I just explained it to you. <laughs> Are you picking it up? U.S. inflation soars in April to 13-year high. Holy macaroni. I wasn't expecting this. <laughs> CPI shows and reveals a fresh stress on the economy. Wow. The mainstream media doesn't seem to think so, but now they're picking it up and they're putting it down. They're actually reporting that there is no gas shortage on the East Coast. Colonial Pipeline resumes operation after ransomware prompted closure. It prompted closure by the people who run it, not be from the ransomware. They just didn't want to pay, so they shut it all down. The powers that be shut this down. <laughs> not some foreign entity. This is not a major threat. It's a bunch of kids in, in a basement somewhere demanding a million dollars in Bitcoin to get more Pornhub. It's almost embarrassing. And today... Beijing Biden and Kamal to Harris together conspired to issue another 184th millionth executive order in the first 120 days of his presidency, making more laws. <laughs> we need more cybersecurity because I need cheap gas in Delaware. He probably didn't say that. He's not even capable of making a sentence. But I digress. Chemical giants hid dangers of forever chemicals in food packaging. <laughs> Well, a decade ago, I was reminiscing about what I should do with the rest of my life. And I said, you know what? I should tell the entire world that Monsanto is in evil. And they're killing you with the food you're eating in the supermarket because you're asleep. Well, people found out. They woke up. Everyone in the world, almost everyone, over 80% of the population in modern cultures know what a genetically modified organism is. Now, the unfortunate thing is 50% don't care. They're called sheep or Democrats. And so they keep eating the plastic garbage. But all, everything inside the supermarket, outside the rim, everything in the middle is packaged. And chemical giants hid the dangers of forever chemical food packaging, forever, especially in the cheapest stuff. The cheapest stuff at the dollar store is in these plastic packages. And chemical giants like DuPont and Daikin knew the dangers of PFAS compound widely used in food packaging since 2010, but hid them from the public and the food, drug, and made uh, the FDA studies obtained in the Guardian reveal. Now, the Guardian is a, a left-leaning sharp factory, but this article is actually journalism where they uncovered the facts because it doesn't matter if you're a delusional socio-democrat far-left guy. You, when, you, when they reveal to you that the plastic covering for your 
Doritos or whatever you're eating is actually killing you and making your children transgender, well, then you start to listen if you actually have a heart and a mind. Otherwise, you just stop calling yourself mommy and say parent, and then you can suck it. Now, the chemicals called 6 Dash two F two O H are now linked to a range of serious health issues, and Americans are still being exposed to them in greaseproof pizza boxes, carry out containers, fast food wrappers, paperboard packaging, and other entities. Now, if you eat out a lot at cheap chart factories, yeah, you probably are getting diabetes and cancer right now. You, everyone in your family is on fourteen hundred pharmaceuticals. If you eat out of the dirt that has never been sprayed by chemicals like Diamond and others, you probably haven't been sick in decades and you're living a life of abundance and extreme pleasure. So the choice is yours. If you've been duped and eating all that garbage food and you call it food when it's actually just some kind of chemically modified product that resembles food, you're the idiot, not us. And all the other shit that they package it in that's making you even sicker makes you even dumber. Isn't that a bummer? CDC's credibility is eroding. Oh, my God. CNBC is reporting on this amid conflicting mask guidance. Yeah, Fauci for months was like, nah, we don't need masks. We need a mask. And he was lying because they needed masks for hospitals. He was straight lying to you. Then he went straight on. It's like, no, everyone needs masks. Now there's a billion non-medical masks, a trillion-dollar industry with a bunch of toxic chemicals and everyone's sucking in their faces, mandated by governments to make you look like complete fools and idiots. But you should comply because that's what they say. Or we'll be demonetized. 67 killed in Gaza. Seven killed in Israel as the UN warns conflict will turn into full-scale war. Hello! Predicted by this channel four years ago. And it's just the beginning. NASA's rocket launch for the Wallops flight facility has been delayed for a sixth day. The most embarrassment that NASA has ever seen in quite some time, except that never a straight answer is completely full of shite. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. When you live in a dystopian world where consensus science means we're not telling you the truth, actual science means you're demonetized and censored forever, and the, the entire population is wanting for information. Subscribe to the channel. Share this to for, with like-minded people. Learn how to grow food. And trust me, if you're not a prepper now, you'll wish you were when the grid goes down. And that's a boom to knowledge. Thanks to all our one-time donors, our Patreons, the heroes that share this video. We love each and every one of you, even the haters. You will come around. Click on one of the other boxes to gain more knowledge. And be safe. We love each and every one of you from the bottom of our hearts. That's a boom. To love knowledge. <laughs>